Okay, this is lesson 36, Safer or Substance. So if you have your workbook, go ahead and turn to lesson 36. Um, first of all, this uh, we're gonna look at three reasons why people drink or get high or, or use a substance, it includes everything. Um, three things about people who use a substance and four reasons why you shouldn't. So here we go. Um, three reasons people drink according to USA Today newspaper. This is in the newspaper. They took a survey of middle school and high school students and asked, why do you use a substance? And the number one reason was to be cool or for image or identity, all kinds means the same thing. We all want an identity. We all want an image. So people are trying to build an image or identity for them. Um, this one guy is senior in high school. Um, he got drunk 28 days in a row. Um, of course, he had a serious problem. When I asked him, why did he do that? He says, because it's expected of me. It's my image. It's my identity. That's what I'm known for. A second reason is we want to belong. We want to fit in. And uh, that's just very common. We all want to be loved. We all want to belong. We all, all want to fit in. And third is to escape problems or to uh, escape pain or distract. And the Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. So God's perspective, when you have a problem, he wants to deal with your problem. He doesn't want you to escape with your problem. So here's a little video here. So what was with you the other night? What do you mean? You know, leaving early, not hanging out with us at Robert's party. Do what? Get drunk again? What's with you? A lot, I guess. You know, the camping trip I went on with Kim over the break? Well, actually, it was with her church. You know, but there were a lot of cute guys going, so I decided, hey, why not? So I stashed a bottle in my suitcase, just in case I needed to liven up the party, you know? Did you get the chance? Well, when I got there, <coughs> everyone in my tent was really friendly. And we ended up talking for a while and ended up talking about some pretty heavy stuff. Like what? Like... I realized all I ever wanted to be was accepted. That's why I started drinking in the first place. I felt like if I drank enough, I forget about how much I felt like I never fit in. in school or anywhere, really. And I felt bad about that bottle I had stashed in my suitcase. I felt if Kim and all of her friends found out about it, they'd probably not want me around. So don't tell me. You felt guilty being around all the good girls and decided to toss it? I should have. Then one night after they all went to bed, I got it out and started drinking. I don't know why. I guess I just started feeling bad, you know? And I got majorly sick. And then Kim and our counselor woke up. And they stayed up all night with me and even prayed for me. Can you believe that? The next day, after I was feeling better, they told me they cared about me, no matter what I did. They told me that empty feeling I had inside, that I was feeling by trying to fit in, was something that only God could fill. I mean, nobody ever told me that before. But it made sense, you know? And that day, I asked Jesus to forgive me and to lead my life. And I know it sounds kind of crazy. I mean, we've been to a lot of parties together. <laughs> we sure have. That really got me thinking. Aaron, why do you drink? Hey, don't put that God thing on me. Well, come on, Aaron, we're friends. I really want to know. Like, I don't know. I, I guess I've never really thought much about it before. You know, Aaron, I had neither, but it's something really worth thinking about. Okay, we have one girl there that she just wanted to be accepted and fit in and she kind of realized the truth of that another girl hadn't even thought about it and most people just go with the flow of culture they really never think much about their lives and stuff and um, i've never had a student who used to do drugs and alcohol or use a substance that quit and they, they would tell me the truth i said yes i did it to be cool yes i did it to do, fit in yes i did it to, to escape problems and stuff but here's what the bible says about problems first of all everyone has problems you will always have problems your whole life the world handles problems through escaping and distracting. No solutions at all. This numb the pain. And when you're done with your distractions, when you're done with your escaping, um, the problem's still there and probably even worse. God wants you to endure problems, okay? 
because you grow in them and they have a purpose for a greater good. God uses problems to build character. There's a purpose behind them. Look at the verse in Romans in the red there, Romans 5, 3 through 5. We can rejoice too when you run into the problems and trials. Not if you run into problems, when you run into problems. But we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confidence and hope of salvation. So God has a purpose in problems to help us endure it, not to escape from them. This one guy in one testimony video, he says, I was getting drunk all the time. And I realized it kept me from growing up because I rather than learning from problems and dealing with problems, I just escape problems. Okay, here's uh, three reasons, uh, something about people who do drink, okay? First of all, um, they're the minority in high schools, okay? So the Oregon High School Survey for 11th graders, they come in every spring and they survey eighth graders and 11th graders, a very extensive survey about all health issues from sleep to drugs to relationships and anyway, this shows that uh, actually it's 39% of people drink monthly or more. So that means like actually 61% of people haven't touched alcohol in the past month. And this is consistent every year through the whole state. So you're not weird if you don't uh, drink, okay? You're in the majority, the minority of, of people drink. Um, Second, 80% of you don't even like the taste. It's an acquired taste. Maybe they like it after a long time. They learn to drink it and tolerate it and stuff, and they acquire the taste. But originally, they didn't even like the taste. They're just doing it to fit in. I remember people at, at parties like would take a beer can and empty out the beer and put like a punch or water in there and just carry around the can so they could just fit in and try to impress people. And they have some deep needs. You can see that on the right side of that picture there, there's an iceberg. 80% of the iceberg is underneath the water. And um, so we see an action, maybe someone's rebellious or someone does a substance or someone has a behavior problem. That's what you see above the water. But 80% of the icebergs below the water, and usually there's a need for identity and belonging or escaping, it's a at the bottom and we don't see that need. I've never done this before, but I've always wanted to go up. Like at one time I was at 7-Eleven at 10 at night picking up a snack and some guy was buying a big double case of beer. And I felt like saying, hey, what needs you're trying to meet? Are you having problems? Do you want to fit in? Are you trying to escape? Or is that your identity? And I'll, maybe I'll try that someday. Um, Here's the main reason. Here's four reasons why you shouldn't uh, use a substance, okay? And this is number one reason. If you remember one thing from this lesson, I, I just say this one thing and it, that's, uh, the rest of the lesson is not necessary. But number one reason is it, it makes God jealous. God is a jealous God. Look at that verse at the bottom. It says, my God shall supply all your needs. God wants to meet our needs for identity belonging he wants to solve our problems he wants to have a purpose in our problems and build character in them and it makes him jealous when we turn to a substance instead of him it's really ridiculous too this is a god that created the universe that counts the stars that died for us and loves us and knows how many hairs are on our head and has a fantastic plan for our lives and we want to turn to a substance for identity instead of him or to belonging or escape the problems instead of giving the problems to him. It, it makes him jealous and it's really insulting to him. So if you remember one thing, remember the main reason you should not use a substance or get high or get loud, like I say, get low because you're not getting high, you're getting low um, is that it makes God jealous. Um, when we turn to other things to meet our needs, it makes God jealous, okay? Um, in this verse here, Ephesians 5.18 says, don't get drunk with wine or because said, don't do drugs or don't get high on weed. It said, instead, be controlled by his spirit. God wants to be his spirit to control you. You have a car. If you are a Christian, Jesus is inside your car, but something's in the driver's seat. You don't want a substance to be in the driver's seat. You don't want acceptance or identity to be in the driver's seat or escaping pain to be in the driver's seat. You want God's spirit in the driver's seat. Okay, so let's compare. When you're controlled by a substance, your speech is slurred, you don't remember what happened, you make bad decisions, and it hinders your motor skills, um, you get sick the next day, okay, and it can become an addiction. If you're 15 years old and you start drinking, you have a 40% chance of becoming an alcoholic. That's just huge. Or a plan B, all right, God's plan. If you're con controlled by God's spirit, it gives you love and joy. 
It gives you peace and patience. It gives you kindness and goodness. It gives you gentleness and faithfulness. And it gives you self-control. That's in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. How would you like the one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right is what God can offer for you. And the one on the left is what a substance can offer you. And you can make a decision that could just totally ruin your life. I remember lifting weights one day at a, a community college and um, when I was in college. And this one guy was in a wheelchair and he was shaking and he was doing therapy and stuff. And he said, oh, yeah, drunk driving. What a bad mistake and stuff. So he's going to be like in a wheelchair the rest of his life. Okay. Substance. I should just say substance or savior. Uh, whatever your need is, God can meet it better than any substance man he loves you he wants to meet that need he, that he loves to meet our needs he loves to build character in our lives okay um a second reason out of the four I remember the first reason if you just remember that that's the most important thing but you become the wrong the part of the wrong crowd now we're like risk rice crispy treats rice crispy treats are held together by marshmallow okay so we're the rice krispies and the marshmallow what holds your peer group together Maybe it's uh, your marshmallow you, for your peer group is your, your faith. You belong to a youth group. Maybe it's sports. Maybe it's a skateboarding. Maybe you're a cowboy. Maybe you're an FFA. But all peer groups have something that holds them together. The worst thing you could have to hold you together is drugs and alcohol. And no one plans it that way. Um, but it just happens gradually. And they just kind of want to be cool. And they copper old, older kids when they're freshmen and sophomore. And the next thing you know, they're, they're freshmen and sophomores are copying them because they're juniors. And that's the main peer group reason for their peer group and stuff. And that's just a sad existence. Walk with wise men and it'll become wise. Associate with fools and you'll get in trouble. Okay, that's just foolish to have that type of behavior. Be part of the right, right crowd and suck them in. That's what drug dealers do or people in the drugs and stuff. They get a little peer group, a little inner circle and they suck people in, okay? Um, this is what Jesus did. He got 12 disciples with an inner circle of three, and he sucked people in. If you want to make a positive influence role, this is what you should do. Get a peer group with common goals and common values and suck, suck people in to your positive peer group, to the right crowd, and to the Jesus group. Okay, um, a third reason is you are going to be a good influence or a bad influence. Okay, check this out. Studies show, I used to teach marketing, so this is from a marketing research company, Ninth graders and 10th graders copy 11th and 12th graders. So 11th and 12th graders have baton that they're passing on to younger people. And uh, a lot of times that baton, probably the most common baton is drugs and alcohol. And you don't want to do that. You want to have a, be a positive influence. Now check this out what Jesus said. These are strong words in Luke 18, 1. It would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into the sea then cause one of these little ones to stumble. Like a millstone is like a huge, huge boulder that you grain uh, wheat with and stuff. And God says, Jesus says, that'd be better to have tied around your neck and thrown in the sea. Like he says, you're better off dead than being a bad example. God cares what kind of example we are. People copy us no matter what we do. It can be positive or negative, but somebody copies you, somebody imitates you, okay? Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. This is my favorite leadership quote. quote. It says, even a shy person will influence 10,000 people in their lifetime. It'll be for good or evil. Everything you do matters. If you use a substance, you encourage other people to use a substance. If you um, skip class, you encourage other people to skip class. It can be positive too. If you work out hard, you influence people to, to work out hard. If you go to a youth group or you go to FCA or you go to Campus Life, you influence other people to go or not to go, okay? Um, if you're on time for class and you're positive in class, you influence other people to be positive in class. So you have influence no matter who you are. If you're paralyzed and then you're in a wheelchair, you still have influence and it'll be for good or evil. You got one life. You go through high school one time. Use that for good. OK, um, Jesus said in the red there in Matthew 12, 30, he was not with me is against me. He does not gather scatters. The way you live your life, you either gather for Jesus or you scatter for Jesus. You're not neutral. And I have one life. I went through high school one time. I want to use that to gather people for Jesus and make a positive influence. Okay. And the last reason, the fourth reason why you should um, not use a substance, God wants you to obey the law. Check out this verse. This is one of my core values, and this will make your life so much better when it comes to making decisions. Everyone is to be subject to the governing authorities, for there's no authority except from God. Those who, um, those which 
exists are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God and they'll have opposed them and they'll receive condemnation upon themselves. So when we disobey authority, like school rules or the law, um, we're disobeying God because what God wants us to honor authority, okay? And so we receive a blessing when we, we honor authority to help us make the right decisions and stuff. So stuff like, you know, vaping or like some smoking marijuana, if it's not medical marijuana before you're the age of 18, that's against the law. We need to honor the law and be a person of honor. Okay, and God, that'll bring a blessing of God to our life. God wants you to obey the laws. He will bless you for to do this, okay? So quick review and do. Um, first of all, three reasons why people use is identity or to be cool or image or to belong, to be loved and accepted and to escape problems, okay? God doesn't want us to escape. He wants us to endure problems and build character from them. Four reasons not to use, and the most important one, it makes God jealous. He wants to meet your needs. He can meet your needs for identity, belongings, acceptance. Um, he loves to meet your needs. He wants you to become part of the right crowd. You don't want to be, be part of the wrong crowd. Um, third, you want to be a good influence, not a bad influence. You want to gather people, not scatter people for Christ, okay? And then he wants you to obey the law, and that will bring a blessing to your life. Those are four reasons why you shouldn't use, but man, you should get filled with God's spirit and experience that love, joy, and peace and get high on Jesus. One time I was lifting weights in high school at an, uh, an apartment during wrestling season. At this apartment building, half was a weight room. Uh, beyond the door was a party room. There was just a wild party going on. And uh, I was, it was during wrestling season. It was a week night. And this guy pops in there and he's drunk or stoned or something. And he goes, hey, want to come in here and get high? I go, uh, no, thank you. I'm high on Jesus. And he goes, what? You're high on Jesus? And he turned to the party room and he brought three or four friends. And he yells, hey, come see this guy who's high on Jesus. And these guys came in the room and they kind of looked at me, tell us. And I was able to share my faith and how I asked Christ in my life. And um, it was this great opportunity. But man, you want to get high, get high on Jesus, get connected to God. The Bible says, in my presence is the fullness of joy, and the right hands are pleasure forever. You're not, not being controlled by some substance that has negative influence on your life. That's not the uh, bringing you pleasure forever and not giving you the fullness of joy. So take some time and jot down in your, this journal here, if you have the journal page, um, so what stood out to you? What are some triggers to remind you of this? Um, what did God say to you today and what are you going to do about it and stuff? You know, people, you know, love, love is when people do what's best for you in the view of your whole life and the view of eternity. If you have some friends, and they make fun of you for not using it. They don't love you. They just care about themselves. They want what's best for you. If someone offers you a substance, just, just say, don't, don't say no, thank you. Say, say, hey, no, man, do you care about me? Do you want what's best in view of my whole life? Um, this is not what's best in view of my whole life. So there's this one guy, one last story. He went to Prosper High School. He's captain of the basketball team. And he was a tennis player, really a cool guy. Um, and anyway, he was on the back of the bus doing drugs on the way to a basketball game. And he's captain of the team. Well, he got caught and they, his parents sent him to rehab for six months. So he went to Jubilee's Boyer's Ranch for six months and stuff. And he came back and he was clean and stuff. He gets back there to his, to his high school, Prosper High School. And his so-called friends say, hey, you want to go come get high? He goes, he goes, no. What do you mean? I just got came through rehab. I'm clean. I'm better off now. And you want me to get high? You don't care about me. You're not my friend. And eventually they wore him down. And he got sucked back. And that, that's really sad. But love does what's, does what's best for a person in view of their whole life. Oh.